Hi everyone, it's Vicky here. Welcome back. I hope you will all have a happy new year. Today I'm going to have a lot of fun by playing with stamped flowers that turn out completely flat. However, I'm going to show you a way that I love to do and I used it a lot back in the day to turn them into three-dimensional flowers. You can do this with any flower stamps that you have on your stash. However, for my demonstration today, I will be using the new flower stamp sets from the latest release by Altenew. And there is a giveaway on my blog, so make sure to check that out. Just grab a stamp of the flower that you want to work with and take a look at the stamped image. Now, if you look at this orchid that I will be using for today, you can see that there are actually two layers of petals, those two at the front and the three at the back. That's why I am going to stamp this image a couple of times so that I can separate the front from the back layer. This is the spotted orchid stamp set. And it happens to be a layering stamp set, so you will see me stamping layer after layer using different colors of ink. However, this technique works with outline flower stamps as well, and I will have an example in the next card. I usually go with dye inks or hybrid inks for stamping layers. However, for this flower, I decided to play with my pigment inks just because I don't grab them that often. And I absolutely love the rich and uh, vibrant impression that they give. However, you do have to be really careful because big pigment ink does dry quite slow and you don't want to have any smudges on your project. So I'm using my misty and I'm going to start with the um, first color which is frosty pink. Now the first layer is a solid stamp and uh, you need to prep it if you haven't stamped with that before, otherwise you will not get a good impression. Here I'm using a stamp conditioner. It is an eraser, specifically made by Altenew for this job, but of course you can use your hand or even an eraser that you have at home. For the first layer I'm using frosty pink. I'm going to stamp that a second time, so I'm turning the paper this way, really quickly and easily, I will end up having two flowers with one go. The second color is Coral Berry. This is Ruby Red. And I will end up with a darker shade, which is Grapevine. There is one more layer, however, full of dots, and I will be using black for this one. If you have matching dies for the stamp flower that you went with, then you can use them to cut them out. However, for this specific technique, I don't like to have a white border. That's why I will go the old way and I'm going to fuzzy cut both images. And the truth is that uh, this specific flower has really easy to follow outlines and cutting them out was really quick and simple. Now I'm going to pick up one of the flowers and this time I'm going to cut out only the two petals that are at the front. Again, quick and simple to do with your scissors. And this is the reason why I didn't want to cut out the flowers with the matching dies because I would end up with some of the petals that would have an outline, white outline, and others wouldn't. Now, uh, depending on the flower that you are working on, you can go really wild and you can even cut out all the petals separately. This is going to turn your finished project into looking super full, so it really depends on you and the time that you have to spend to cut out different petals. And of course, here's a trick that we all have to do on our cutout images. When you are fuzzy cutting images, it's always a good idea to go around the edges with a black line. This is going to cover up any mistakes that you did while cutting out the image. I also want to have a stem for my finished project, that's why I'm going to just drag the ink all over a scrap piece of white cardstock. And of course you can be here quite creative, you can use your baby trimmer to cut it out and have a completely straight stem, or you can use your scissors and give it a curve, it's up to you what you want to do for your finished project. I'm going to give some dimension on the separate petals. For that I'm using a set of tools that I have, but you can always use the back of your bone folder, the back of a pencil, just grab whatever you have at home to do something similar. The set that I'm using is by Cedrix, by the way, and I'm working on a very um, soft surface that came with the set. However, you can use a mouse pad, which is perfect for that. I'm using one of those round tools to break the fibers at the edge of the petals and this is going to help them turn towards the top. 
This is going to give a real dramatic look on the paper and when you will finally put the flower together it's going to look really full and dimensional but you can have a similar look in a more simple way just by using your fingers which is a technique that I'm going to do for the next card. I'm going to use the same technique for the leaves just breaking the fibers there and help them have a little bit of a curve. And for a flower that is going to be so dimensional, I want that to be the focal point on my card. That's why I want to have quite of a subtle background. I'm going to use this white panel and I'm spraying that just a little bit at the front and at the back with water. Since I'm going to use the Ribbon Waves three-dimensional embossing folder by Altenew, this is a favorite, absolute favorite. I find those waves so lovely and you can use it back or front. Both sides are so pretty and I'm going to use both of them in the two cards that I'm making today. And now finally it's time to put the card together. For the two layers of the flowers I do have a tiny little foam square in between them so they do have dimension and I'm going to stick that directly on top of my panel. I'm going to tuck underneath the stem and then I'm going to finish it up by sticking down the leaves. Now the background is embossed so you cannot stamp there, however I did use die cuts, these are from the simple greetings die set that give you the outline as well as the actual words. I do have foam square at the back and I'm going to stick that on this panel, this is a scrub but no one will ever know that uh, at some point I did cut out a butterfly out of that. I placed the whole panel on top of a pre-folded 4.25 quarter by 5.5 card and you can see here the lovely dimension that I got on my flower. For my second example of turning a flat flower image into a dimensional wall, I decided to go with this really complicated design just to show you that it works with any flower design. So I stamped that three times because I can see lots and lots of petals and I can go really wild with that. I'm going to do quick coloring. You can go ahead and color it with your favorite uh, coloring mediums. I'm going to uh, turn it into a super quick card. That's why I decided to work with the stencils. A really quick coloring would be to go ahead and cover up completely with a very pale color the whole flower. This would go really quickly and you don't have to do a lot and then go with the stencil on top of that to add a darker shade of color. However, I decided to have my flowers completely white so that they can pop on a darker background. That's why I'm not going to do that. That was just a demo and I did go really soft over them. And the only thing I'm going to do is to just apply the stencil on top of the flower and add only the shading through the stencil. And I will end up having three flowers colored in no time. Working with stencils to apply layers of uh, shading on your flowers is a really easy and quick method because they are really easy to align. And um, I'm using just a piece of repositionable tape so that I can keep my stencil down. And I will repeat the same process two more times. By the way, the flower image that I went with does have leaves as well. I'm not bothering with them at all. I will chop them out with my scissors later on and I will use separate leaves for my flower composition at the finished project. By the way, this gorgeous flower comes from the Vintage Garden stamp set from the latest release by Altenew. Now, I took a very close look on the design of the flower. The first layer is going to be the complete flower, so I did fuzzy cut that already. For the second layer, I am going to decide which line of petals I'm going to follow, making sure that this layer is slightly smaller than the first one. Again, I do use my scissors to fuzzy cut all the layers, including the background, which would be easy to cut out with my matching dies. However, I don't want to have that white border all around. This image was more complicated than the first flower that I did for the first card. I, it took me a little bit more time, but I love fuzzy cutting and I don't really mind. I really love the finished outcome with a full dimensional flower. It really makes a perfect focal point for a card. 
So here you see I ended up having three layers with the third which is the smallest and the center of my flower. I'm adding just a little bit of uh, extra shadows with a lighter shade of my alcohol marker making sure that I don't cover up all the white space. I just want to have that white space because I am planning to stick this flower on a darker shaded cardstock. For this flower, instead of using the tools that I used in the previous card, Twilight Dimension, I'm just going to use my fingers and curl up the tips of the petals on all three layers. Then finally I can stick one layer on top of the other by using foam squares in between. You can follow the exact design like I'm doing here or if you want to have your flower look even fuller, you can stick the layers slightly off. And that of course depends on the flower image that you are working with. So for example, if you are working with a daisy, you can cut out so many different petals and offset them to make the daisy look super full. If you love this technique and you want to see more examples, let me know in the comments below. This is a super fun project for me and I would love to make even more flowers from stamped images into dimensional ones. So you can see here I'm putting my card together on top of my pre-folded white card base. I did stick my silver glitter cardstock because I love how navy blue goes with silver and white. I think they are a perfect elegant color combo. And you can see I did use the same wavy 3D embossing folder for my background. This time I'm using it the upside down. So I did use both uh, ways and you will see in the close-up photos that both look absolutely stunning. They are really subtle but they do add that extra something on an otherwise simple card. For the leaves I did use the matching dies from the same stamp set to cut out the leaves that I didn't stamp at all on top. I am playing with uh, different options of my hello die and finally I decided to go simple with just a white cutout hello. And I did add a few silver gems here and there. Here are some close-up photos on the last card for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget, down below you will find a list of all the supplies that I used, as well as a link to my blog where you can enter the giveaway. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.